The search has begun for Australia's first junior MasterChef. This is the place to be hanging out. Five and a half thousand young cooks, aged 8 to 12, applied for the competition of a lifetime. It feels great that I'm one step closer to the MasterChef kitchen. To win the title, they'll have to cook far beyond their years. Fantastic! <laughs> and face the most formidable taste test ever seen. This is so cool. Tonight is a race for the final spots in the top 20. There are plenty of fish in the sea, but everybody's scared of the shark. And Matt Preston sets his toughest seafood challenge. I've never seen that much seafood in one spot before. The competition's youngest cooks shine. When it comes to cooking, age doesn't matter. And a sizzling last heat serves up magnificent meat recipes. This is one mighty meaty challenge and we can't wait to get our teeth into it. Well, we have 50 of the country's best young chefs vying for the title of Junior Master Chef. We've had two heats so far, and eight young cooks have gone straight through into the top 20 qualifying round. But I can't wait, because there's still three heats to go before the final qualifier. So let's get stuck into it. Now for the names for heat three. First person is Ainsley. Next young person we'd like to see up here is Jeffrey. Brennan. <laughs> Sophie M. I love cooking because it's really fun and when I start cooking, I just can't stop. I just keep going and going. Ali. Georgia. Alex. Daniel. Josh. When I'm cooking, I feel like I'm having fun. And especially when I'm trying new things, I'm like, whoa, that is sick. The last person to join Heat 3 is Sophie J. Well, this is going to be a cracker. You know why? You're cooking for just one man. He knows food, he loves food, he's a good friend of us, and he's a walking food encyclopedia. And he's here right now. You think I wasn't coming? But, wow, Matt Preston. <laughs> We're cooking for Matt Preston. You know, I can't stand to miss a good meal. But today I'm happy to say that I'm bringing the ingredients. <laughs> now, I hear that the ten of you are experts in seafood, and what I brought for you to cook with is some spectacular seafood. In those bins we have salmon, snapper, barramundi, squid, prawns, and even blue swimmer crab. Everything you need to create an amazing seafood dish. Easy. But there's just one more thing that you need to know. I will be your only judge. You're like, what? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> he was the last person I wanted to cook for. I was really scared. Now remember, the four best dishes go through to the top 20. All you have to do is drive Matt's taste buds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and just take a breath, don't panic, and it will all be beautiful. Just remember, yummy. Well, my mini master chefs, you've got a full pantry from whence you can draw your ingredients. 
But before you do that, I'm going to give you a minute to run up to those forklifts, survey that amazing seafood, and get some inspiration. I've never seen that much seafood in one spot before. I'm just looking at those creatures and I'm thinking, got a few mussels, got a few shrimp, maybe I can pull this off. I see some snapper and I think I might use that. And so I'm thinking, put some crumbs on it and do a sauce. Right, my mini master chefs. You should be suitably inspired now. You've got 45 minutes to complete your challenge and your time starts now. What seafood are you using today? Um, today I'm going to be using some prawns and some mussels and some gemfish. I've decided to make a dish that I call la goût de la mer. It is basically a soup, which I call the taste of the sea in French. We're really proud of him, his dad and I, especially as he's cooking seafood and I can't stand seafood. And if he gets through, he'll be absolutely delighted. I hope Matt loves your dish. Thanks. Hey, Sophie, how are you going? Good, thanks. What are you cooking? I'm cooking a classic French dish, which is herb crusted snapper. OK. And with a verjuice beurre blanc sauce, which is like a traditional white butter sauce, yep. and some asparagus on the side. Be careful of that beurre blanc so it doesn't separate. Yep. It stays together and it's nice and velvety in the mouth. Yeah, good luck. George tells me to make sure the sauce hasn't split. You want it high to reduce the verjuice, but once you put the butter in, you want to turn it down low because otherwise that butter is going to separate and then it goes all clumpy. Matt Preston, can't wait to taste your food. You have 30 minutes to go. Snap along. Georgia, yes. how are you going? I'm going good. Georgia came over and asked me what I was doing and how I was going. I'm an excellent liar. I said I'm doing absolutely fine. Inside, I was kind of panicking. <laughs> Tell me, uh, what's your dish? I'm doing carco, and it's a traditional Vietnamese dish, and it's caramelised salmon with bok choy, chilli garlic and cracked black pepper. That sounds delicious. Right, you've got lots to do, so chop, yes, chop, let's go. Good luck, yeah? Thank you. Sophie, how are you going? Good. Tell us what you're making. I'm making a Asian-style fish cakes. Oh, wow, that sounds beautiful. You've made fish cakes before? Yes. OK, and what can go wrong with it? A lot of stuff. Tell me one thing that can go wrong with it. Leaving things out. And you're making a little dressing? Yes. And what's in there? Um, brown sugar and lime juice and fish sauce. Beautiful, so you get and the salty, sour and sweet. Sophie, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Good luck. Oh, it looks like you've got a beautiful stuffed squid there. Why did you choose squid? Um, I just like the texture and the flavour. My squid tubes are going to be stuffed with breadcrumbs, chilli, shallots, lemon and prawns. That's not sounding too good there. We want to make sure it's really hot with seafood because you don't want it to become tough. So it's really important to get your pan really nice and hot. And as soon as it's almost smoking, then whack your squid on. OK, best of luck. Thank you. Alex looks like this sort of... He looks like a chef. He's cooking away with such elegance and finesse. That is going to be a ripper of a dish. Yeah. Very sophisticated, but you know what? If he's not careful, overcooks the fish. Nothing worse than dry prawns, you know, dry fish, you know, in a bubbly soup. Doesn't do it for me. Keep my fingers crossed for him. There you go. Who else is catching your eye? Look, Ainsley's really, really good. I mean, she's doing a stuffed squid, but I can tell you something, she's really pushing it. Because if she doesn't watch the time, she is not going to get that finished ready for Matt to eat.
one side of my squid's cooked, then I put it on the other side and I leave that for a bit and then realise it's starting to burn. My whole world just comes crashing down. I'm thinking to myself, the squid doesn't take that long to cook. So I ask for another one and then I get that on and it starts heating up pretty quickly. It's very challenging getting it perfect. There are plenty of fish in the sea, but everybody's scared of the shark. You've got one minute to go. One minute to go. I'm just getting my fish out of the oven. That's it. Down to the wire. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Preston's hungry! High five. Good job! My time's up. I really hope the judges like and I hope I can get through. That was absolutely incredible to watch. This is probably the best heat so far, some of the best cooking we have seen. Matt is the guy with the difficult job now. And first up to the tasting table is Sophie J and Jeffrey. I've got the dill on top, I've got the fish on the sauce, it looks great. So I'm hoping Matt Preston likes it. Sophie, tell me what your dish is. It's a herb crusted snapper with verjuice spur blanc sauce and asparagus. I'm really excited to try that. And you know what's even more exciting? Normally I have to share what I eat. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Can I tell you right now, this is absolutely delicious. The fish is beautifully cooked. That beer juice, the slight sweetness there is absolutely beautiful underneath. You're how old, Sophie? 27? 30? <laughs> yeah, I wish. Yeah, really good. Really, really, really sophisticated cooking. Really, really Thank good you. food. Jeffrey, tell me what the dish is. A whole steamed snapper with soy sauce. A soy sauce dressing is great, but you've obviously had a bit of a problem with cooking. It hasn't quite got to that point where the flesh has started to kind of band together. This is sophisticated stuff you're doing here, Jeffrey. Great flavours and really, really, really wonderful balance in terms of sweetness and the saltiness of that dressing. So well done, Jeffrey. It was time to take my dish up to the judges. I just went, this probably isn't good enough, it's too simple. Georgia, what's the dish? Um, it's Ka Ko, which is a traditional Vietnamese dish, and it's caramelised salmon with bok choy, chilli, garlic and cracked black pepper. Beautiful. And what am I going to taste? Because I caramelise the salmon, there'll be that sweetness and there'll be some spiciness from the chilli and some crunch of the salmon skin. You sell your dish really well, Georgia. It doesn't taste any good. I've sold it. <laughs> 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 Spoken like a true chef. Well done. <laughs> It's really simple in terms of what you're doing. By using ingredients simply, you've got bags of flavour, bags of texture, and lots going on. Every mouthful is slightly different, which is fantastic. So, Brennan, what's the dish? Mediterranean barramundi with salt and pepper squid rings and vegetable julienne. That tomato and caper mixture is fantastic. Ellie, what have you made? My aunt's prawn and egg curry. And you've made a real hero of the prawns in this dish, Thank so well you. done, Ellie. Josh, tell me what the dish is. Salmon pasta with fried salmon skin, cream sauce and capers. Crispy salmon skin is absolutely delicious. And it's a great way of bringing some crunch to a dish like pasta and capers. Josh, well done. Now, Daniel, what's the dish? It's a salmon bake. The sort of thing you want to sit with a big bowl of in front of the football and really enjoy. Good stuff. So, Sophie, tell me what the dish is. 
their Thai fish cakes and a crunchy salad. I love your Thai fish cakes. I love them because they're beautifully cooked, crunchy and brown on the outside, really light and fluffy in, in the middle. And that crisp one box salad with the mint and this, this delicate, sweet, tangy dipping sauce is a beautiful combination. You're very talented, well done. That is a really good dish, thank you. Thank you. I was pretty relieved when he said that I had talent cooking. I was really, really relieved about that. And the last two people to the tasting table is Alex and Ainsley. This is going to be really hard. I'm probably not going to get through because so many people have put up so many great dishes. Alex, great looking dish, what is it? Um, it's a soup that I call lagu de la mer. It's basically prawns, mussels and gemfish and it's cooked up in a really nice passata sauce. Are you happy with how you cooked the seafood? Um, no, not really. <laughs> what do you think is wrong with it? I think I might have undercooked um, some of the fish. Right. Guys, you have to come over and taste this, because that is absolutely beautiful here. Yeah. Mm. Let's try that, Gary. Can I have a look? Yeah, great. Wow. Yum. Bursting with the flavour. Beautiful. Yeah, that's a really, really smart bit of cooking, young man. Well and done. And, Alex, you said that you were worried about undercooking some of the fish? Yeah. I reckon that's absolutely spot on. Alex, well done. Love it. Well really done. good dish. See all of the judges enjoy my dish is probably just the best thing that could happen to me. Ainsley, you've stuffed the calamari in credit to our friend over here who we know in Melbourne is George Calamari. That's George's nickname is George Calamari. <laughs> so um, what have you stuffed it with? It's breadcrumbs, parsley, chilli, lemon and prawns. You know, so we have some tricky moments with squid, so I'm really interested to see whether you've cooked that perfectly. I know that if it is tough, Matt won't like it, and I probably have lost my chance of getting through to the top 20. Ooh, cuts like butter. That squid is butter soft and perfectly cooked. Well done. That is two really fine dishes. Alex, amazing. It's wonderful. It's so awesome to have him tasting my food and to say that it's good. Well, the tasting's over. Now it's time for my decision. I was expecting some pretty good food today, but you've blown me away by what you've cooked. The techniques you've shown, the understanding of flavours, the sophistication of what you're putting on the plate is amazing in 25-year-old cooks, let alone guys that are 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. And, you know, now is really the tough part because only four of you can go forward to the qualifying round. And so it means I've got a really hard decision to make and I haven't got anyone else to hide behind. So you know exactly whose shins you have to kick if you don't get through. If I call your name, that means you're through to the qualifying round. And please step forward. The first person through to the qualifying round is Alex. Wow. I think that this is probably one of the biggest things I've ever done in my life. Sophie J. over the moon. I was like, wow, this is actually happening. This is great. <laughs> he liked my dish. It's really good. Sophie and... Thank you. When he called out my name, I was really excited. It was just really fun, cos I knew that everyone was clapping for me. Only one place left. What I have to do is I have to look at the dish that shows the most technical skill as well as those fantastic flavours. And for me, that means there's only one person 
who can make up the fourth place, and that's Ainsley. <laughs> I'm just amazed. I am close to tears and, oh, it's such a relief. Sophie, Alex, Ainsley, Sophie, off to the beaches. Go and see your parents and go and have a bit of a, a hug and a kiss. Off you go. I think I'm still dreaming because it's just so cool. I get to go through the next round and I'm really happy and I'm excited and I'm pumped and I want to give it my best shot. I'm really sorry that the six of you didn't make it through. There were so many great dishes and really any of you could have been in those positions and that's a hard decision I have to make. So you're welcome when you see me in the street next time to come up and kick my shins. Do you want me to do it? Go on. Yeah, go on, George, give me a kick. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. Go on, give me a kick of the shins. I hate yeah. you, Matt Preston. Well done. Get him, man. Well done. Well done. I was pretty disappointed that I didn't get through, but yeah, it's just been so great to even get this far. I've made so many new friends, it's great. We've already seen some incredibly young, talented cooks who give plenty of adults a run for their money. When it comes to cooking, age doesn't matter. And I think this next heat is really going to prove it. The 10 kids who are about to step into the kitchen now are about to astound Australia. They're the youngest competitors in this competition. So let's start with the youngest 10 year olds, starting with Anthony. <laughs> Isabella. <laughs> Tiani. I love cooking because it makes me happy and cooking is just the only thing I really love to do. And yeah, it's my passion. And Tallulah. <laughs> and now for our nine-year-olds. Sienna. Cooking, I feel very happy and relaxed, and um, I just really like it because you get to eat it at the end. And Jessica. <laughs> and finally, the two youngest competitors in the top 50. They're only eight years old. Chris. <laughs> and Zoe. It's been the funnest thing I've ever done. Does it make you feel happy? You're happy in it? George and I do this all the time on the show. Matt's doing it as well. <laughs> 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 okay. Nearly your time to cook, so keep a lid on it just for a second or two. This is how the heat's going to work. You are going to cook us your signature dishes. The dish that you cook better than anybody else in the world. Uh. You're going to find all the ingredients that you need to cook your signature dish on the benches behind you. You've got 45 minutes and your time starts <laughs> now. Hey Anthony, how are you Hi. going? Good. Now, what are you cooking? I'm cooking uh, garlic prawns with uh, uh, breadcrumb coating. Then, how old are you? I am 10 years old. Brilliant. Have you got a special prawn haircut? Because that's really spiky. I tell you, who did that? Can I feel? Dad. Ah, <laughs> feel how hard that is. I love that. It's unreal. Something that I have to be very careful of when I'm peeling the prawns is that I get the whole poop shit out because the judges don't want to get a big, long piece of poop in there, um, in their dish. 
Anthony, you better crack on. Yes. Good luck, and I can't luck. wait Thanks. to taste the porn. Love the haircut. Zoe, how are you going? Good. What are you cooking? This is a. Um, this is a. Looks like a complicated recipe. It's sort of complicated. And what are you cooking? Uh, Chinese chicken parcels. That sounds absolutely gorgeous. Zoe, how old are you? Eight. Eight, Eight years old. Years old. <laughs> so, what are you most worried about on this dish? Probably under under cooking the chicken parcels. You go get them, yeah. Make sure that chicken's cooked. Yeah. Good girl. I can't remember if I was cooking beef or veal, and um, that made me feel crazy. What am I doing? Beef or veal? Beef or veal? You may be the youngest competitors, but I reckon you're the bravest. You've got 30 minutes to go. Come on. Let's Come on, go. guys. Come on. Tani, what are you cooking for us today? Um, a pork and watercress soup. Oh, yum. Beautiful. And where did you get that recipe from? Um, my man. So is it a traditional recipe of any yeah, type? modern, traditional, New Zealand recipe. I've never tried this dish. I'm really excited. So you're going to fry this off and pop all your veggies and your beautiful yeah. pork pieces into the pot with yeah. a load of stock and simmer away. You better get cracking. Yeah. Gianni, I can't wait to taste this dish. I know Anna's going to be the same. And that watercress looks fantastic. Well done. Nicholas, how are you going? Good. Looks like you're cooking up something sweet for us today. What are you making? A uh, chocolate fondant with um, double cream, um, raspberry coolie and fresh raspberries. Yum. Yum. So when we cut it open, it's going to be all oozy and gooey and rich in the middle, yeah? Yeah, hopefully. Fantastic. And you've got those raspberries, you're going to add some acidity. That yeah. sounds delicious. So yeah. is there anything you're worried about with this dish? Um, not the um, fondant not being cooked dry, not being gooey. If you overcook it, then it'll pretty much be a chocolate cake. But if you undercook it, it'll just collapse and be a running mess. Make sure your chocolate's nice and warm when you pop it in, otherwise you don't want it to seize. Yes. Yeah? You've got this kitchen in an absolute frenzy, and we love it. You've got 15 minutes to go. We need to hear you. Sienna, how are you going? So, Good, what are you cooking? I'm cooking a lemon lime curd tart with a macaroon base and a raspberry sauce. And I'm cooking that because my family loves it. Sienna's handling the pressure far better than her mother. <laughs> she's got it all under control and she's like, Mom, just calm down. Sienna's doing great. How that old are you, really Sienna? I'm nine. Wow. Look, the macaroon bases, look, they look fantastic. You are joking me. You can see when you're done where there's the little tiny bits of egg white and egg yolk floating around, and you have to whisk it quite fast so you can get those eggs separated into tiny, tiny, tiny bits into the mixture. Well, let's hope the curd turns out OK. There's a little bit, there's a little bit of scrambly bit. Yeah. And uh, those little tarts come together beautifully. And it's going to be fine. Just keep an eye on your raspberry, Sienna. Yep. How good is Anthony? You're probably involved in the shelling and the deveining of yeah, thousands no, no. of prawns in your time as a caterer, but I can tell you right now, sometimes amateurs leave that really basic thing out. I really hope as a young cook, he gets it right. Yeah, there's nothing worse. I'm really, really excited by what Sienna's doing. It looks like it's going to be one of those real A1 winner dishes. The only question is whether she can avoid the egg curdling in her curd. That would take it from a triumph to a tragedy. Right, Nick, here we go. It's a moment of truth. How is it, buddy? Come over here, let's have a look. It needs to be a bit wobbly on the top, so when you rest it, it'll keep cooking, and then when you turn it out, it'll be nice and gooey when you cut into it. Can I tell you, your food smells and looks delicious. We can't believe how good it is. We can't wait to taste it. You've got one minute to go. 
Come on! God, oh my... Why does the school go this fast? You've heard this before. We're down to the wire. You've got ten seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Stop cooking. Thank you, guys. Well. You've cooked up a storm, now it's time to taste your delicious dishes. First up to the tasting table is Chris and Anthony. When I was walking up to the judges, I was holding it by one hand. George was giving me a sign and he's like, do your hands, do your hands, do your hands. I'm like, good point. Anthony, what's your dish? I made uh, garlic prawns with a uh, breadcrumb coating. You don't need cutlery for yeah, that. Pick it by the tails. Oh, can we do that? Are we allowed to? Yeah. Good stuff. Oh. Perfectly cooked prawns, lovely flavour of garlic, and those crunchy breadcrumbs. And most of all, you have avoided leaving any poo shoots in. And we don't like poo shoots. So, Anthony, good job. Well done, Anthony. So, Chris, tell us what your plate of food is. A macadamia crusted bevermundi with asparagus and tartare sauce. Chris, that's the sort of dish you'd expect to see in a restaurant not cooked by a young kid. You've done amazingly well. Well done. Tiani, tell us what you cooked. Um, uh, it's a pork and water soup with a fry bread. I want the recipe for that bread. That's just fantastic and so simple. Well done. It's beautiful you brought us some of your Maori heritage. The wonderful flavour of the watercress in that rich porky broth. It's the sort of food that I would love to eat every single night of the week. Well done. Thank you. Now, Zoe, how old are you? I'm eight. When was your birthday? November 23rd, 2001. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're the youngest contestant in the whole of the top 50, yeah? Yeah. That's amazing. What have you cooked? Chinese chicken parcels with soy ginger dipping sauce. You've done an absolutely beautiful job. I love your presentation, and you must be very good at wrapping presents. Really well done. <laughs> Jessica, if you're cooking chocolate puddings like that at nine, imagine what you're going to be cooking like at, say, 20. So, Tallulah, what did you cook for us? I cooked a beef and broccoli stir fry. You need to put your hand up and give yourself a pat on the back. Well done. Now, Ben, what beautiful dish you brought us? Beef olives with caramelised red cabbage. You've shown so much technique here. A real tremendous job, Ben. Isabella, if you cook the fish simply, you've got wonderful colour on the outside. Really fine dish. Well done. Thank you. I'm taking my dish up to the judges and I'm feeling quite nervous because they're food critics, right? So, Sienna, what have you made for us there? Lemon and lime curd with a macaroon base and raspberry sauce.
lovely, crisp coconut on the outside and this beautiful, zesty lemon curd. That is absolutely delicious. I love it. Thanks. I just looked at my finished dish and I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that here. Nicholas, tell me, what have you cooked? A chocolate fondant with raspberry coulis, double cream and fresh raspberries. Nick, I love it. You know, that is a beautiful chocolate fondant. It's got this lovely little crispy exterior and a soft, gooey chocolate interior. That is a brilliant little fondant. Well done. Thanks, Gary. So everyone's dish has been tasted, and now it's time for us all to find out who's going through to the next round. You are our youngest competitors in Junior MasterChef. You've cooked fish brilliantly, meat brilliantly, desserts brilliantly. Good job. <laughs> if I call your name, please step forward. That means that you're through to the qualifying round. The first person through to the top 20 qualifying round is Sienna. I'm just like, wow. Oh, what a huge relief. The second person through is Anthony. Looked up at mum and dad, and they're like, and mum was crying, as usual. The third person through is Nicholas. <laughs> oh, oh my god, I can't believe I actually got in. Right, only one spot left, and if you don't get it, it doesn't mean you didn't do a brilliant job because you are all absolutely fabulous. That last spot in the top 20 qualifying round goes to Tiani. This is one of the best moments of my life. I'm really, really happy and excited. Marvellous job from you four. Can't wait to see what you do in the next round. Now, back to the beaches with your folks. Probably the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah, definitely. You guys at 60 you weren't lucky enough to make it through, but you cooked some beautiful food. But the most exciting thing for the four of us is because you are so young, we know that we'll see you next year in the Junior MasterChef kitchen, showing us some cracking dishes and giving it another go. Good job. Now, this is it. This is the fifth and final heat. First one up is Jack. Next young cook up is Alex. Asia. This trio needs to be a quartet, so we need Cassidy. When I came down from the grandstand, I was really excited, but I also had butterflies in my tummy. Number five in the lineup is Charlie. <laughs> Emily. Lucky seven is Kane. Libby. Tom. The final young cook in the final heat is Pierre. Food is my passion right now, and I love it, and it's like a hobby to me. Now, this is it. The final heat. Heat number five. There's only four places left in the top 20 qualifier. This is what you're fighting for. This is what it comes down to. You've got to cook your little hearts out. OK, guys, before you start this challenge, you need to get ready for a shopping experience of a lifetime. Take a look at this. 
George was there in his butcher outfit with beef cutlets. There was meat fridges. It was like a supermarket. Well, my shefflings, it's me old mate, George the Butcher, <laughs> with arguably one of the best butcher's shops you will ever find. It's loaded with delicious cuts of meat. We're excited to see what specials you are going to find in George's shop. Ready to go shopping? Yeah! Let's go! Welcome to my butcher shop. You guys are specialists at meat. I love meat. I think it's brilliant. We've got beautiful lean beef fillet. We've got T-bone steaks, lamb shanks, as well as a shoulder of lamb or a leg of lamb. This butcher shop has it all. Are you excited? Yes, sir! Well, that is lucky. You know why? Because for Heat 5, you guys need to produce the best meat dish you've ever cooked in your whole entire life. Jack, you're first up. What would you like, buddy? grab a lamb rack. A lamb rack. Four bone or three Four, bone? Four, please. Four bone. OK, we'll take that one there and we'll give you an extra Thank one, you. all right? Two chicken fillets. Two chicken fillets. Brilliant. Tenderloin steaks. Tenderloin steaks. Uh, two wild rabbits, please. Wild rabbits. Have you cooked with wild rabbits before? Yes. Because rabbit's one of those meats, you know, if you don't get it right, it can be a little bit dry. What would you like, buddy? Um, can I please have a scotch fillet? One chicken breast. One chicken breast? Yes, no please. problem. You know yes. what? I'm feeling generous today. I'll give you three, yeah? Yeah. Pierre? Can I please have a four um, bone lamb rack? Brilliant, no problem. I'll pick out maybe that one. I'll give you an extra one, okay? On the house. Thank you. Here you go, Pierre. Enjoy, Thank you. buddy. So you got 45 minutes. You got a pantry of stuff behind me. Your time starts now. Hey, Pierre, how are you going? I'm good, thank you. Now, what's the dish? Tell me, what, what are you doing? Um, it is herb custard lamb cutlets with stuffed mushrooms and green beans. Ooh. Now, what are you most worried about? Time. Time. And how many times have you cooked this dish? Oh, too much. Too much. How yeah. many times is that? 10 times, 20 times? More. More? I can't yep. believe it. And how do you like your lamb cooked? Um, I like it uh, still a little bit of red inside, yeah, but not pink. too much. OK. Because I don't want the lamb to be undercooked and I don't want it to be overcooked. I want it about medium rare, medium. OK. And that's the nice one. It's supposed to be cooked rosé, which is just pink. Now, I want to know one other dish that you, you're really good at cooking. Chocolate mousse. Chocolate mousse. So you love to cook things like lamb racks yes. and chocolate mousse. Yep. You're a man after my own heart. <laughs> Cheers. Hi, Emily. Hello. I was just watching the way you were trimming out the saddle pieces of the rabbit. You were a complete professional there on that one. What was the dish you going to make? A rabbit and mushroom ragu on a bed of soft polenta. Rabbit is a hard thing to cook. It can easily go too dry or be undercooked and tough. Is rabbit one of your favourite meats? Um, yes, and I use it a lot because we have a farm. Well, I'm so excited to see a kid using rabbit. It's such a great meat to use. It's a brave dish, too. A lot of people are scared of cooking it because it's hard to cook perfectly, so good luck with that. Fantastic. Can't it's wait. Safe. So what's cooking, Jack? Lamb racks with cooked in a paste of Paprika, cumin, coriander, butter and garlic. Jack is amazingly cool. I'm the one that's freaking out. He's organised, he's cool and he knows what he's doing. What's the danger? What can go wrong with this dish? Um, if you don't cook it enough. Yeah, so, so if, if it's raw in the middle, well, it needs to cook yeah. through properly. There'll be nothing worse than having raw meat in front of the judges. So you want it lovely and pink rosé, yeah. yeah? Yeah. And how are you going to serve? You've got some potatoes boiling here? Um, you... Some tomatoes and some lemon, and I'm about to make a cumin 
and salt mixture. So I'm gonna cut the rack so into cutlets. Oh, fancy. And yeah. then I'm gonna towel them up. You know, you know, he's actually taller than both George and Gary. <laughs> so, 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 it's not that hard to be taller than George. It is. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Let's not pick on George. <laughs> well, well, no, we're allowed to pick on George when he's not here. <laughs> now for the secret ingredients. Cassidy, how are you going, darling? Good, thanks. How are you? What are you cooking? I'm cooking chicken and mushroom risotto. Is it going to cook in time? Yeah. Your rice is actually at a really good point, right? Yeah. And it's always a, a little tip for you. It's always good to, rather than stirring the risotto, yeah. you actually just shake, agitate the pan, shake it like that. Yeah. OK. Jack out the back, he's cooking lamb cutlets. Are you concerned about them? It's tricky because too often you see lamb that, that's kind of grey and sinuous, but I love the way he's plating it. Big wooden board, nice fat roasted tomatoes, and he's going to do a cumin salt. Now, I reckon if he pulls that off, that's going to be a really good dish. What about Emily? She's doing the rabbit. She's taking a whole rabbit. I love to see her song cooking rabbit, and she's making a very sophisticated ragu flavoured with cinnamon, star anise, orange zest. If she gets the balance of flavours right, it'll be great. If she overcooks the rabbit, disaster. And we know rabbit is a really easy meat to overcook because it's so lean. There's no fat to make it kind of yummy and juicy. Took my potatoes about 15 minutes to start getting soft. And that was really a big concern. About five minutes to go, I realised I just need to do my potatoes. I put it in a sieve to make it all soft and how it's supposed to be. I quickly race, I'm getting more nervous and more nervous. I'm sweating a bucket load a minute. I am not going to get this done. This is your last opportunity to grab one of those four spots in the top 20 qualifier. First up to the tasting bench is... Alex and Emily. I was happy that I'd served up my plate and it looked good and I was nervous that they wouldn't like it. Emily, what's the dish? I did a mushroom and rabbit ragu on a bed of soft polenta. Are you happy with the dish? Because rabbit's a tricky thing to cook and can get very dry sometimes. Uh, yes. Good. Well, Emily, I love the gravy. I love the sauce. Polenta's gorgeous. The mushrooms are gorgeous. There's lovely little subtle notes in that stew. Good job. Alex, what's the name of your dish? Mum's steak sandwich. That steak sandwich is really gorgeous. Meat perfectly cooked, perfect amount of salad. Thank you. Pierre, what have you cooked? Um, herb custard lamb cutlets with stuffed mushrooms and green beans. Yeah, the lamb is cooked perfectly. Um, that crust, I think, is just like, I just want to eat the crust. It's so much guts, it's full of flavour. Well done, Pierre. Thank you. Fantastic, man. <laughs> Charlie, what have you cooked? I made um, a chicken Trinidad with a pilaf.
Charlie, again, you know, so young and showing so much technique. Well done, Charlie. I can't stop eating it. I love it. Asia, do you think that chicken's got perfectly in the middle? Um, I don't know. Good work, Asia. Well done. Kane, what have you cooked for us? I have cooked herb steak with mushrooms, spinach, shallots, and smashed potatoes. <gasps> Lovely. Happy with that? Yeah, I am, actually. Yeah, yeah that's good. As a steak eater, I love that. Fantastic. Libby, I love the way you cook your lamb. And it was my go and I was, had a really big smile and I remember it looked really good and I just wanted to eat it. <laughs> Cassidy, tell us what you cooked. Um, today I've cooked um, my chicken and mushroom risotto. You know, Cassidy, I was really worried when I heard you were doing risotto because you know in MasterChef it's normally a disaster. People have made it with strawberries, it's been terrible, <laughs> with nuts, it's been disgusting. It's got this just perfect amount of chilli for me. It's just there, it's humming away, but it just brings that whole dish out. I love your risotto. All I'm going to say is, a great risotto. Well done, Cassidy. Thank you. I'm walking up to the judges and my knees are starting to seize up. I feel like I'm just going to collapse on the ground and it's going to go everywhere. Jack. Look at the size of that meal. Tell us what it is. Um, it's lamb cutlets baked in cumin, coriander, paprika, butter and garlic paste. With that is the roast tomatoes and the lemons. <sighs> got his, oh, he's got his fingers crossed. Oh. OK, let's have a look. You want some pink? Happy? Yep. yep. I might just do this, hey? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Mm. I love that dish. It's big, it's hearty. It talks of you. That's what it is. It's a jack kind of dish. Yep. Wow. I loved your presentation. I thought it was really beautiful. And I think you put just the right amount of spice on the outside of the lamb. You can still taste the sweetness of the meat and the Grilled lemon was just like, for me, the best bit of all. Thank you. All the dishes of the contestants have been tasted and we all stand it in our line. Well, at the final heat, only four places left to make it into that qualifying group of 20. If I call your name, you've made it through, you've taken one of those four places, I'd like you to step forward. Jack. I was so relieved. It's just what I really wanted. It's one of the happiest times I've ever had. Second person through to the qualifying round is Pierre. God. Your mum's embarrassing, you know? You should, yeah? Pia, mate, it doesn't matter how old you are, your mum is always going to be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> the third person through to the qualifying round is Emily. I was very surprised and shocked and excited. Great flavours of star anise, cinnamon, a little bit of orange in your rabbit ragu, and just an all-round great country dish. It's the sort of food that I think it's nice to see people cooking of your age. So well done, Emily. There's only one more spot 
left in the qualifying round. And that spot goes to Cassidy. <laughs> I could hear my mum and my dad calling my name and cheering and clapping, which was really exciting. Jack, Emily, Cassidy, Pierre, excellent job. You proved your meat masters. Now go back to the bleachers and enjoy. Thank you. This has been an awesome day. I woke up thinking, oh, I'm not going to make it. There's no chance. It's one of the best times ever. You should be so proud. You made it in the top 50. That's a massive achievement. And the food you put up today was exceptional. Can I now ask all the terrific young cooks who didn't make it through to come on down because we now have something very special for you. Right, Sheflings. Shoulders back, chests out, bit of pride because you beat five and a half thousand people to get here. You should be so proud. Anna, Gary and myself are delighted that we are here and we're just so thankful that you made our job so hard choosing which dishes to pick. Thank you so much for your food. And remember, if you're 11 or under, there's next year. Well done, guys. Give yourself a big round of applause. Today, each of you will go home with a special little gift from the Junior MasterChef competition. You'll all get a prize pack to help you forge ahead in your careers as cooks and as chefs. First of all, you'll get a ScanPan IQ cookware set. You'll get a set of Spectrum knives. You'll get a Mix Master and a hand blender from Sunbeam. Congratulations. <laughs> There's also something else that we want to give you, something that money can't buy. Something that you're going to have forever that represents, number one, that you guys beat 5,500 people to get into the top 50. Something that's got your name on it for life. It's an official top 50 Junior MasterChef plug. Right, guys, come and collect your special plaques. Well done, Alex. Well done. I've really enjoyed my experience, even though I'm not going through to the next round, because getting into the top 50 is an amazing achievement. Come on, you yeah, guys. Thank you. And you did a fantastic job. I think that's one of the best things I've ever done in my life so far. Even though I didn't get in, I am going to follow my dream and be the owner of a restaurant and a chef. <laughs> well done. Congratulations, guys, for being part of the Junior Master Chef Top 50. That's a real achievement. You should be really proud of yourselves. You guys are great cooks. Congratulations. OK, guys, it's now time to head home, but we want you to go out there and keep cooking because the future of Australian food is in your hands. No pressure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. See you later. Well done. Never going to give up on cooking. I'm going to continue cooking and try for next year. Right, mini master chefs on the double, right down here. Come on, chop, chop. <laughs> Congratulations, it's official. You are the junior master chef top 20. Yeah! Yay! Now the 20 of you will go on to a qualifying round. The 12 of you will win a place in the master chef kitchen. And one of those 12 will become Australia's first junior master chef. Next time on Junior Master Chef. This is where it gets tough. The final 12 will be revealed. This competition is about to be taken to a new level. To win the title, 
they'll have to create incredible recipes. It's time to shake your tail feather. My heart's beating so much. They'll have to cook far beyond their years. The dish that you'll all be cooking today is? Oh my God! Who will be the top 12 Australian Junior Master Chefs? I want to be in that top 12 a lot and a lot and a lot.